Shad Adversity. Greetings, I'm Shad, and we're going to be looking at another pop culture weapon to try and figure out how realistic and useful this weapon would actually be in real life. And we're going to be looking at as kind of a mix between both rocket hammers and rocket picks. And I'm mentioning rocket picks because we see one in a really cool movie that's been released recently, Battle Angel Alita. Edo uses essentially what is, it's a rocket pick, okay? But this idea is almost identical to the idea of a rocket sledgehammer, which we say see in Fallout. The only difference is a pick over a warhammer. But the whole mechanic is identical, okay? Where there is, is a booster, a rocket, on the back end, increasing the speed in which you would be able to swing this fairly heavy, you know, weapon, and therefore increase the force that it's able to impact with much greater degree. Would this be useful? Well, it's very elaborate and I do see some potential issues, but ultimately I think it could work. Let me explain my thoughts. One of the issues that I'd see is the potential of having this thing ripped out of your hands, okay? That momentum, okay, the angular momentum, because what we're experiencing here is centripetal force, okay? Not centripetal, centripetal, which is the force holding the uh, heavier part of things in line with the angle, okay? And that's the shaft of the hammer. That is the centripetal force carrier, like gravity is the centripetal force carrier of uh, any, you know, planet or moon in orbit. The thing that is causing momentum to go forward is inertia, but to keep it around this angular rotation, yeah, centripetal force. And that's why you're going to feel a pull as this thing rotates quite heavily, okay? Because if you want to keep it rotating around that axis, you need to hold it in place. And with a lot of weight on one end, with something causing it to swing much faster with greater force, and you try and do that, whew, it'll, be, it'll be a jerk. But it's still, it actually might not be that much, okay? You might be able to hold it in place around this rotation, and if that's the case, the force would be increased much, much greater. Like, this would be a very devastating thing, because this is one of the difficulties in using, say, a sledgehammer like a weapon so darn heavy, okay? And it is heavy to kind of lift up to the point where you want to strike and then accelerating it to a faster speed. With a sledgehammer, you're not doing that much more than what gravity is able to do with it. With a sledgehammer, you lift it up, you let just gravity pull it th down and it's so darn heavy that the standard acceleration that gravity gives all things, okay? Gravity will accelerate a feather as fast as it will accelerate a hammer. It's just with the hammer has more mass, it's able to push through the wind resistance to a greater degree, which is why feathers fall slower. But if you were to take out atmosphere, that actually fall at the same rate. So gravity is pulling on this thing at the same thing and it's so heavy that wind resistance isn't gonna affect it at all. And that acceleration by itself, just with gravity, can produce huge amounts of force which crush concrete, okay? And even if you're gonna push and pull you know, and really swing this hammer down with your own strength, the effect isn't going to be that much different. It's gravity that's doing most of the work for you. Yet, if you can accelerate it further with greater strength, okay, yeah, the effect wouldn't be too much different. What if you can increase it much, much further, and especially with different strikes, because gravity is only really going to help you with downward strikes. Try and do a sideward strike with a sledgehammer, you're not going to produce nearly as much force because all the acceleration is coming from your own body, and this thing is darn heavy, okay? Very difficult. Now, if you get acceleration, okay, you're holding it near up the haft, and you get this big swing, and then you move your hand down in full uh, at the full point where the swing is extending out furthest okay well the momentum will help it keep it you know horizontal for a bit and you're not actually needing to support it and you're just using the momentum you'd still be able to get a certain amount of acceleration and speed but again it's not going to be as much as just a full-on downward strike and so in this sense the uh, rocket if you had a rocket propelling it around that would be very helpful but then how are you gonna stop it, okay? This thing is gonna pull you with it and you're gonna be turned into a spin or knock you off balance and that could be very detrimental. This is one of the problems that I see with it. If you're gonna be using a rocket hammer or spike, you're gonna need to change the way you fight with it. Instead of just doing these big strikes where you generally would stop or hold the position, everything like that, you will have to keep the momentum swinging. Otherwise, it'll pull you off. Oh my God, hammer pulled you off. And so instead of doing these strikes like that, I reckon you would want to resort to kind of like a figure eight uh, type of attack where you can keep swinging this head around and with the, the rocket propelling it forward, you'd be able to get it pretty darn fast. Can you Have you seen how fast people can spin sticks? Now, I don't think you'd be able to get it that fast with a rocket hammer but certainly faster than you'd be able to do it by you know just on your own and uh, that would be devastating you would not want to get hit with this thing because that's where you want the force to end you don't want to have to stop the force yourself where you're spinning it and then kind of uh, and because as soon as you try and stop it, it there'd be so much momentum that it might pull you with it and send you with it like if you can stop it on something 
on your opponent in the ground or something like that, all that force is being transferred away from you, not you having to try and absorb it. Yeah, and that's when you're gonna do a lot of damage. But like I said, you would have to change the way you're fighting with it, which would be kind of tricky. Now, I reckon you could do big rocket powered downward strikes, but the recovery is going to be very difficult. If you miss that downward strike, this hammer is gonna go smack right into the ground or concrete sink itself in or get could get jammed or anything like that. And you're holding the end, okay? To lift this thing up, you're gonna need to choke it right up to the top and lift it up because the head will be so heavy. And that means moving down, you're vulnerable, you're getting up and you can't really recover to defend or do another strike. And this is one of the big weaknesses with top heavy weapons like this is the recovery after striking. So in, his, in history, they are, are more often made much smaller than you would think. You don't need a huge amount of weight concentrated at the top of a half to do devastating damage. Medieval Warhammers are actually quite small, yet there was advantage with the hammer being smaller because it concentrated all this force onto a smaller end and therefore could do a lot more damage. And then you could still get a certain amount of control, okay, you can do hits and try and stop, but it's not going to pull yourself off your own balance, okay, but still using kind of figure eight, going with the momentum, even with medieval axes, which are nowhere near big as like fantasy axes, are uh, quite useful and beneficial. All right? Even with a shield, you can that fight this way. So being able to recover from big downward strikes with historical top heavy weapons, it's far more possible, okay? You're not nearly as restricted as you would be with something as heavy as a sledgehammer. That's, that's pretty full on. So in my opinion, you would be very reluctant to do heavy downward strikes like this unless you know you're gonna hit because if you miss, and the opponent hits you, you don't have much defense. A shield would be very useful in this regard. That means if you're able to hold onto this, you'd probably have to take down the weight a little bit, put a rocket end on this end of the hammer, and you do a big heavy downward strike, and if they dodge, okay, you have hit the ground, but you have a shield that you're able to block and defend yourself while you recover. This is why, more traditionally, axes, okay, and warhammers and stuff, were usually always used with a shield. Not in every circumstance, if you have armor, that can protect yourself, because that's the other thing. Okay, you miss a big downward hit if you have heavy armor to protect yourself, you can get away with it as well, and then recover and strike again. But what about the difference between a spike, like we see on Edo's rocket pick? It's essentially a rocket Beck de Corbin, if you really want to get technical, which I kind of mentioned it in my video on war scythes. So there, there we go. A rocket Beck de Corbin or a rocket hammer, okay? What would be the difference and advantages between the two? Well, I actually think you would want to go with the hammer over the pick. Pains me to say, because I love Edo, I love Elita Battle Angel, but no, a pick is not a good pick. <laughs> Why? Simple reason is that the pick has far greater chances of getting stuck in whatever you hit, whether it's the ground or your opponent. Now it's interesting, Edo is using him against Cyborg, so even when he lands a hit, doesn't mean they're dead. Usually if you land a hit like that on a human, they're dead and <laughs> getting it stuck in them is kind of what you want, that's the intent. But having said that, maybe there are hits in like the gut that doesn't kill someone instantly and they would be able to try and do a couple of last death throws before they eventually cark it. And getting your pick stuck in someone if they had armor and you know, jammed that thing in, that's not what you want, okay? And what interestingly, we actually see this in Alita Battle Angel when Edo is using it. It actually shows this element of realism in the fights where Edo does a big hit in something and it's hard to recover. It gets jammed and he has to pull it out. Of course, when he does land a hit, it's like, complete destruction, but I actually think you would get easily as high levels of destruction with a hammer over a pick, and the advantage with the hammer, well, it won't get stuck, okay? It will spread that force over a larger area because the advantage of a pick is all that force is concentrated on something very, very small, a very small point, okay? Which increases the penetrative power massively. And if you had to get through armor, well, it depends because blunt force, especially with a sledgehammer with such force behind it, it's going to transfer a lot of force underneath that armor regardless. It'll cave it in, it'll dent it. So that's why I think the trade-off is you're still better with a hammer because it's gonna its damage is so high that you don't necessarily need the force focused in on such a fine point like you get with a pick. And hammer would also be more durable. Uh, these are really, really strong hits. And so that your pick would not be able to maintain a sharp point for very long. It'll blunt and round off after the first few hits, especially if you're going against concrete and steel and it's made out of steel. You're not going to maintain it, but yeah, it'll round, maybe to a roundness like, you know, the end of my controller here, just just like that, get that blunted, but it'll still even continue to get blunted the more that you strike with it, to the point where it's kind of a rounded hammer anyway. So go with the hammer. 
The other thing that you'll have to confront with uh, trying to use a weapon like this is fatigue. You will tire so quickly when trying to use this thing. So you're going to have to be really strong just to be able to have the weight and swing it around easy enough like that to recover from the strikes as well. And then you're going to need to be really fit to keep it up. But having said that, this is kind of a one hit, one kill weapon. So maybe I need to reassess that fitness thing. If you're just able to hold it, bide your time, okay, uh, wait for an opening and get one solid strike in. Maybe you don't need to keep swinging around and go crazy and do all this kung fu stuff. Just hold a defensive stance. You wait, 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 and get that one hit in. It's kind of game over. And in that sense, all right, okay, maybe it's more plausible and usable than I was saying before in terms of fitness. I really have been thinking about maybe a, like a mild rocket hammer that will increase its speed by twice as much as you had seen before, three times as much and still hold it on. But rockets are powerful. And if you get crazy acceleration and you're not ready for it, it's gonna be pulling you with it. It's gonna be thrown out of your hands. And the other interesting thing is, is that the rocket is behind something, something rather heavy. And so when there's a lot of force behind something heavy and uh, thanks to inertia there's a lot of stationary inertia trying to hold this heavy thing in place there's a chance that the rocket instead of pushing it forward will cause it to rotate and turn and and even eventually start spinning especially if that rocket right the rocket behind something heavy if it is off centered by the slightest degree okay and is not perfectly in line with that heavy weight in front of it this thing is going to start spinning and be and be really hard to control. So I'm not actually recommending anyone test this in real life. I mean, if you could do it safely, you know, get maybe test it with a dummy and stuff like that. Maybe the guys at the Hacksmith could give this a go. Hacksmith, love their stuff, by the way. Great YouTube channel. I think it has potential, okay? It would be devastating if you could really get this thing to work. The damage would be crazy and it would be a one hit and you have to try and fight it like defensively and just wait for that one hit hit the rocket on and just this devastating hit and then maybe don't try and throw it into the ground because if there is a chance they'll dodge turning that hit into a spin to do a follow-up strike and then if you miss again you instead of continuing and getting yourself tired stopping it trying to pull the momentum down and then resetting yourself and waiting for that one hit insta kill okay you'd need to fight in a more defensive way to wait for the opening but uh, you know i would be packing my taxi files if i was trying to fight against a thing like this and if you're going to say it's slower remember the rocket though it'd be interesting to see how fast a rocket could accelerate if this hammer could just go like bang straight in and it's a fast attack because we think sledgehammers are slow because it's just us hitting them even on fallout and stuff the animations for these rocket hammers don't seem that much faster than if you were using a regular hammer or stuff. I think they actually use the exact same animation, so the swing, and so that doesn't really reflect how fast you could actually get this hammer to move. It would be, re it'd be really hard to slow it down. So if you're going to be accelerating this thing really fast, uh, so fast that you wouldn't be able to redirect and spin it around, you essentially have to hit something, otherwise you're going to lose control of it. So the safest strikes might be the ones directed into the ground in that regard, and if that's the case, you need armor to protect yourself in case you miss, because you're huge usually vulnerable when you need to recover. And of course you have to turn off the rocket when it hits something so you can just lift it out because if the rocket is pushing it into the ground while trying to lift it, you're not, you're not going to be able to. But still, so if you're there and the rocket just goes on with a bang fast strike and just like... Because of course, the faster it goes, the more force it will generate and that's just deadly, all right? Complete destruction. So in my opinion, there's potential for making a weapon like this work, but there are a lot of concerns, okay, that you would really want to try and figure out that could ruin it, make it completely impractical. The force you'd be able to generate is there. That's, a, you know, just physics, okay? So, whew, dangerous dangerous stuff. So there we go. These have been my thoughts on the classic rocket hammer and rocket pick, or rocket pick to Corbin. Thing. Thanks for watching guys, I hope you've enjoyed, and of course I hope to see you again. So until then, yeah.